So, you're traveling in Japan, and you have to use the bathroom. But, oh no, you can't read. How are you going to flush? This is an actual situation that my friends and family have run into when visiting me. Well, I'm here to demystify the Japanese toilet, so you have one less thing to worry about on your next trip. I'll be showing the toilet in my own Japanese apartment, but some features change depending on the place, and I'll bring up those changes as we go. Let's get the big question out of the way. How do you flush? Well, on many Japanese toilets, you still have the normal handle. However, in some restaurants, the flush can be one of the control panel buttons, and in most handicap stalls or hospitals, the button will be on the wall instead of the control panel. If that happens, you'll want to look for one of these two kanji. These will be near the flushing mechanism. These kanji are very easy to remember. This is the kanji for big, this is the kanji for small. As you might suspect, turn the handle toward the small kanji to produce a flush that uses less water, turn toward the large kanji to produce a flush with greater power. Now then, let's go over the other features. The first thing that'll stand out to most people is the toilet bowl cover that doubles as a faucet. That's because in many Japanese apartments, the room with the toilet is literally just a toilet. Then there's another room nearby with your bathroom sink, tub, and shower. Some hotels you come across will have this setup as well. The faucet only produces cold water, and you have to crouch over it, so I usually ignore this sink and go to the bathroom sink to wash my hands. Onto the control panel. It's not as intimidating as it first appears. Starting from the left, you've got bidet controls. This button says Oshiri, which means buttocks. It fires a higher concentration burst of water using this extendable nozzle to help clean you. The bidet function shoots water from the same nozzle, but at a slightly different angle and softer. These two buttons with the three lights change the force of the water jet. Press the left button to make it weaker, and the right button to make it stronger. To retract the nozzle, press this button. If you've ever driven a car in Japan, you'll recognize this kanji from stop signs. While recording for this video, I discovered that the nozzle actually doesn't activate unless there's weight on the seat, and automatically stops and retracts if the weight is removed. So don't worry about touching the wrong button by accident and having water spray in your face. It's not gonna happen. The last bit I'd like to cover is the temperature settings. Press the top button to change the water temperature. Press the bottom button to change the warmth of the seat. The other buttons just cover settings like power saving and nozzle cleaning and maintenance, so I won't cover them here. As I mentioned, this is just the unit that came with my place. In fancy restaurants and malls and high-income areas, you can find additional features such as seats that open on motion detection, and an additional set of buttons that play sound effects like a babbling brook or a fake flush. But these features are best used in public spaces and aren't as relevant in the privacy of your own home. So that all being said, with the exception of the small sink on top, almost all the special features are essentially just attachments for the toilet seat. If you wanted to get a toilet like this for your own home, I think it would be as easy as replacing the toilet seat and cover. No need to replace the entire unit. All you need is an outlet somewhere nearby, and you should be good to go. You are now equipped to enjoy the full features of a Japanese toilet should you find yourself in Japan. I'm a small creator, and your subscription allows me to make videos like this more often, so thanks for your support, and have a good one.